Hey guys, I want to talk with you for just a few minutes about how we can write numbers in scientific notation. Now you'll remember yesterday we worked with scientific notation just a little bit and we talked about the fact that it allows us to write numbers that are either very large or very small in a form that's easier to work with. We said there's two things that have to be true about a number written in scientific notation. The number has to be written so it's the product of first a number between 1 and 10 and second a bunch of 10's multiplied together or 10 raised to an exponent or power. In fancy math terms we write it as c times 10 to the n where 1 is less than c which is less than 10. Or in other words, this number has to be between 1 and 10, we put it first, and it gets multiplied by a bunch of 10s until it equals the value we are looking for. And then we use the example 8.1 times 10 to the 6. Notice the 8.1 is between 1 and 10, and it is multiplied by a bunch of 10s. So, if I were to give you a number like 6.21 times 10 to the fourth, this is written in scientific notation because this number is between 1 and 10, and I'm multiplying it by a bunch of 10s, we can change that to 62,100. Remember, this 4 right here tells us how many 10s we're multiplying by, and we said that every time we multiply by a 10, this decimal point is going to move. Once around the 2, the second time around the 1, the third time around a 0, and the fourth time around a 0. So the decimal that did start off here between the 6 and the 2 would become 1, 2, 3, 4. It would become a decimal right over here. So this is 62,100. Now this is a review, so if you would just pause the video real quick and see if you can put 7.9 times 10 to the 8th into standard form as well. When you're done, go ahead and restart the video, see if you got that correct. I'm going to assume you've already done that. Remember, this is 7.9, but we're going to move that decimal eight spaces, making this 7.9 into a much larger number. It's going to be 790 million. The decimal was between the 7 and the 9. We go around once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven. We move that decimal eight places and fill in the blank spots with zeros. Again, pause the video, see if you can remember how this works and how it's different. I'm going to assume you've already done this on your own and you're now playing to check your answer. Notice that this time my exponent is negative. So instead of multiplying by 10s in order to make this 4.6 into a really large number, this negative exponent says use the reciprocal or multiply by 1 tenth. We know that this negative 3 basically is telling us when we multiply by 1 tenth, we're going to move this decimal 1, 2, 3 places to the left. Notice the decimal was between the 4 and the 6. 1, 2, 3 places to the left puts it right here. And one more for you. If you would, pause the video, try this, see if you can do it, and then restart the video to see if you're correct. I'm going to assume you've done that. This decimal is between the 9 and the 1. Notice we have a negative 7, so we're multiplying by 1 tenths. That is going to take this 9 and make it smaller by moving the decimal to the left. Notice it is moved once around the 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places. How'd you do? Pretty well. You know what? Go ahead and do one more. Why not? I'm going to assume you've done that. Notice it is a negative 2 here, so we're going to move that decimal two places to the left. 1, 2, giving us 0 0.0602. Again, if you're struggling with that, you may want to go back and watch the, um, a video on how we do that conversion. It was in yesterday's notes. There is a YouTube video um, on it on Nunley Math, so just go ahead and check that out. If you feel pretty comfortable with that, let's try something new. Suppose there's a boulder in Colorado that weighs 52,000 pounds. That 52,000 is in standard form. If I wanted to put that into scientific notation, there were two rules for scientific notation. My decimal needs to be in a position where I have a number between 1 and 10. Notice, if I put that decimal between the 5 and the 2, 5.2 is between 1 and 10. 
in scientific notation, I would say one, two, three, four. That is four movements of my decimal to get it into the appropriate position to be a 5.2. So I'm going to put that decimal right here. That's my 5.2. Once I have that, 5.2 needs to be multiplied by a bunch of tens. Well, let's see. If my decimal was originally out here at the end, and I had that big number 52,000, and I've moved it four spaces to make it 5.2, my exponent up here is going to be a 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 movements of the decimal gives me an exponent of 4. Now the last thing I want to check is whether this 4 is going to be positive or negative. Notice I want to take that 5.2 and I want to turn it into that big number we started with 52,000. So I'm going to have to take this 5.2 and multiply it by a bunch of tens. That tells me this is positive. If I want this 5.2 to get really big, I multiply by tens, that's a positive 4. If I want the 5.2 to become a small number, I'm going to divide by tens or multiply by one tenths. The way I show that would be using a negative exponent. Here's another example. A skin cell has a diameter of 0 0.00003 meters. This is a really tiny, tiny number. It is written in standard form. In order for this to be in scientific notation, I'm going to have to take this decimal and I need to move it so that my number is between 1 and 10. So I'm going to start moving that decimal. One place, well, 0 0.0003 is still smaller than 1. I move it a second time, well, 0 0.003 is still too small. I move it a third time, a fourth time. 0.3 is still smaller than 1. So I'm going to have to move it one more time. Now I have this number 3. That's where I want my decimal to be at. So I'm going to move it there. This is 3 times a bunch of tens. Well, how many places did I move that decimal? Once, twice, three times, four times. I've moved that decimal five times. One, two, three, four four and five, this is going to be to the fifth power. But when I look at this, three times 10 to the fifth is going to give me a really large number. I want this to represent this really small number. So I'm going to need to take this three times a bunch of one tenths. And the way I'm going to show that is by making that exponent negative. See how that works? Now, it's just like we did yesterday, except we're doing it in reverse. We're still using this exponent to tell us how far to move the decimal. But instead of being given the number in scientific notation and moving the decimal to be in standard form, we're beginning in standard form and we're moving the decimal to put it into exponent form. If when you finish you're a little uncomfortable, you can always use what we learned yesterday and turn it back to see if you were correct. The last thing I want to do is give you a couple sample props, let you try that before you start your homework. Let's do this. Let's take 48,000. I'd like you to write that in scientific notation. Again, pause the video while you're working, and then when you think you have the answer, or if you're stuck and can't go any farther, restart the video and see if what I'm doing matches what you're doing. Notice that 48,000 is a very, very large number. I'm going to need to move my decimal from the end here, one, two, three, four places to make it into a 4.8. That 4.8 is going to be multiplied by a bunch of tens. All I need to do is figure out how many. Well, let's look, take a look back up here. I've moved it one, two, three, four places. So that's going to give me 10 to the fourth. I'm going to double check. 4.8 needs to become something really big, so I'm going to multiply by a bunch of tens, meaning this is going to be a positive 4. Making sense? Tell you what, once you try this one, put that in scientific notation. Well, let's see. My decimal moves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7. My decimal is going to move 8 places so that it's between that 7 and that 8. Remember, this has to be between 1 and 10. I'm going to multiply it by a bunch of 10s. How many? Well, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to need to move that decimal 8 places. Since I want the 7.8 to turn into something really big, I'm using a positive 8. Try that one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If I move that decimal 14 places, I get my decimal to be between the 2 and the 6, which works because this is between 1 and 10. Try that one. Notice this is a really tiny number. I'm going to do the same thing. How far am I moving that decimal? Well, if I put it between the 1.5, it's between 1 and 10. But this time, I'm going to need to take this 1.5 and make it something smaller. I'm going to be dividing by 10s or multiplying by 1 tenth. I show that with a negative exponent. How far did it move? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It moved 7 spaces, but I'm going to use a negative 7 indicating that I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Try that. One, two, three places gives me 3.86 times 10 to the, well, I moved it three places. It's going to be to the third power. But I need this 3.86 to turn into something really small. So I'm going to make this 10 to the negative third. Last one, don't let the negative sign out front throw you off. We're going to do the exact same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 movements puts my decimal between the 6 and the 3. 6 and 3 is between 1 and 10. Notice we did put the negative down here, so technically it's between negative 1 and negative 10. It has no effect other than it's something extra for me to keep track of. How many movements was it? I forgot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We moved it 11 places, but we made it into a really tiny number. Hopefully that's sufficient to help you with what you need for today. Um, do your very, very best. Remember, don't rush through this. Make sure those arrows go up in between the numbers. I saw a few people who are making those uh, arrows touch the bottoms of the numbers. Remember, the decimal goes in between. Make sure you're doing that and be careful that it goes around each and every one. Some people are getting in a hurry and skipping two at a time. Don't rush that. Keep it neat and you'll have this just fine. Hope that's enough for you. Good luck, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.